what makes the world go around is that we all don't like the same thing. Can you imagine if all of us were the fucking same? I think a guy left Patreon a couple of weeks ago. And I know, I'm going to say this, and you guys are not going to be happy with it. He asked me what my favorite Bill Murray, is that his name? Movie. Movie was. I told him right now. I go, I'm not a big Bill Murray guy. He was like, how can you be a comedian and not be a big Bill Murray guy? I go, dog, everything's not for everything. I'm a big Harold Ramis guy. I loved fucking uh, Bill Murray and Stripes, you know. I didn't like Ghostbusters. I walked out of Ghostbusters with the dude who stabbed 20 guys that did 20 years. <laughs> I went to see Ghostbusters. I used to go to movies with him. We used to go to movies all the time, Charles Bronson movies. We were fans. You know, he's not from North Bergen. He's from, he lived in Fort Lee. But this guy just got out of fucking doing time. We used to go to movies all the time, and we had that. We used to go to movies and concerts together, and we both had the exact taste for the shit. Me and him would go to a movie, and also we just look at ourselves and go, let's get the fuck out of here. We walked out of Twisted Sister. We walked out of Ghostbusters. We walked out of 20 fucking things together, and we would just go home. I remember one time I gave him a head of ass, and he went home. I go, what? He goes, I'll never do that again. Yeah, because you went home. <laughs> Who the fuck goes home on a hit of fucking acid to look at your mother and father? That's fucking humiliating. You should have stayed out with me and walked around and gone to the park and thrown bottles at people, anything. But you don't fucking go home on a hit of acid. But anyway, <laughs> that's the way life works itself out. No one's talking to you? <laughs> yeah, you're going to go home and fucking look at the walls and shit. The first time you do acid, you need to be around three or four people. And, you know, talk and fucking walk or whatever the fuck you're doing. Listen to music. But you just can't fucking go home and sit and stare at your fucking, your parents. You'll fucking lose your mind. I have a hard time just getting high with my wife in the fucking house. I go outside to get high, come back in. They look at you like you're fucking Johnny Creepo. So I, and that's just fucking weed. Can you imagine on acid? Everybody's looking at you. You're all fucking, your eyes are glowy. I remember one time we did fucking ketamine in the fucking office. I'm not going to tell you what it was. That's the only time we fucking, for the guy who had the secret tape of us doing blow from 2006. Yeah. I've got undercover footage of Joey Diaz doing blow. No, we never did blow. And that's Lee. We never did fucking blow. We had blow in the office, but we gave it away to people who, I had a guy that dropped off a package from time to time and would say, here, take this, I don't do it no more. And there was a picture of Lee, I would hide it behind Lee's picture, so if the cops came, they thought it was Lee's. <laughs> there was a picture of me and a picture of Lee behind the door. So they had a ledge to it, like it was like an artist draw it, so I would take the fucking picture and put the package there. And then when somebody would come in that did coke, I'd ask them, you want some blow? No, really? Yeah. Boom, and they fucking take it. But one time a guest came, and they brought some fucking ketamine. I was like, what the fuck? And I did like two or three lines. Lee did like two or three lines. And then he left it behind. Like he took a baggie with him, but he left like a half a gram on the fucking table. And I, you know me, dog. I, old habits die hard. I'm like, Lee, what are we going to do with this? We just can't put it in a package. You know, you just can't put it away because it's going to be here haunting us. Let's just fucking finish it. Now, the first two or three lines weren't that fucking bad. I got to be honest with you. They weren't bad at all. It was when we split that little pile up, me and Lee. It was like 9 o'clock at night. We split that little fucking pile, and I thought nothing was going to happen. We had an edible in us. We had a bunch of shit in us. And, dog, after I did that line, I got up to pee, and I was like, oh, shit. I am fucked up. So I went in, I peed, I washed my hands, I got my fucking bag. Oh, Lee, I gotta get the fuck out of here. He's like, where are you going? I gotta get the fuck out of here. I went downstairs, I got in my fucking car, and at the light, all I had to drive was to a light, make a left, go down past one light, and I was home. So I'm like, you would never fucking see cops. And I would, you know. And I didn't have any alcohol in my breath, so I was fine, you know, unless he looked at my eyes and they were pinned. I get in the fucking car on this fucking ketamine, and I make that left turn at the first light. It's Colfax, and it go, I, I'm on Chandler, and I'm making the left on to Colfax. And as I'm making the left around, it felt like I was in a fucking at a amusement park. Wee! Like, <laughs> I, like I made the fucking left. I'm like, wee! I'm like, oh! <laughs> Uncle Joey's fucked up on this ketamine. Then at the next light was where Yum Yum Donuts was. I'm sitting there at Magnolia. And I'm looking at yum yum donuts and shit. 
And I'm like, what the fuck? The sign was starting to wave. And I'm like, Joey, you fucked up. I get to my block. I make the fucking left. I pull up in the driveway. And when I take my left foot to land on the floor, I open up the side door, the passenger, the driver's side door to get out of the car. And when I put my foot on the fucking door, on the floor, I could feel it creeping. Like this drug was in full effect. I'm like, oh my God, I'm fucked up. I walked in out of all the nights. Usually when I get home at night, my wife's out. Very seldom with that fucking living room TV be on. It was like 10.30 on a Sunday night. I'm figuring my wife is out. She's passed out. We, we got to, and The scary thing was we got to the office like at 4. The podcast was like at 4. And we got so fucking high. We stayed there till like fucking 9.30, 10 o'clock. The podcast finished like at 7. We were just so fucking high talking back and forth, all three of us. And the guests left. And then we had that pile and we did it. When I fucking walked in the house, I opened up that door and I seen the TV was on. I fucking shit my pants. I'm like, God damn it, now I got to face my wife. And that's somebody I have a hard time facing when I'm fucked up. So I, I honey, I'm home. I got, you know, she said, yeah, I could, I could hear you. I went into my fucking office and I'm sitting in the office. I got like a hooded sweatshirt, like a hoodie, a t-shirt on, whatever. And I'm like, boy, it's getting fucking hot in here. And I'm like, oof, oof, it's getting fucking hot in here. I take the fucking hoodie off. And do you believe it's still fucking hot in here? I'm like, oof, it's too fucking hot in here. And then I took my T-shirt off. I'm down to just titties now, sitting by myself in front of the computer screen. Something I don't like doing. I don't sit in front of the computer screen with my top off because I got that camera on me. So some guy could be watching me with my fucking shirt off and my tits out. I don't need that in my life. So I'm like, I'm going to get off this. I, I took, shut the computer down, and I just sat at my desk getting higher and higher. The edibles and the ketamine were fucking up. I think ketamine is like an animal tranquilizer. The guy who gave it to us told us that they they tried it on experiments. That, too, that's another drug that they're working on, PTSD and, and different fucking forms of brain fucking things. They're using ketamine also. So he said, it's good. They give it to retarded people. I, I don't know what the fuck he meant. I know for a fact I was fucking retarded at the end of the night. I was sitting there fucked up. And I'm like, I got to tell you something. I better go out there and sit with my wife before she comes in here and sees what's going on.